you look across this small space here in Ann Arbor and you will see within a short distance dozens of people who are tackling the world and its problems in very different ways. And it's the activism that's both local and international. The global really begins in the backyard. We're interconnected globally now, each of us, and given that interconnection, we have the opportunity and I think the obligation to, as, to address as best as possible injustice around the world. I think internationalization is one of those things that in a great university gets embedded into its DNA early on. I think Michigan was really lucky to have a president like uh, James B. Angel uh, be president for almost 40 years. James Angel opened the store when he was asked by the President of the United States to become ambassador to China. I, you know, this was unbelievable. Michigan represents what's, what's best, not only in America, but best in the world. In the challenges that exist outside of our borders of Michigan and, and the United States, uh, it's been that way for a long time and inviting others from around the world to share their perspectives. Early on, uh, Students at Michigan have understood that, first of all, we have a global reach, uh, that they have a responsibility to be globally active. That's been a feature of Michigan students for a long time, and we see it in big ways like the Peace Corps. For those thousands of students that stood on the steps of the uh, Michigan Union to await Kennedy to show up where he said, announced the Peace Corps, and the students there who actually had created the idea. I mean, that is one of these synaptic moments where, where that spark, which has continued throughout and sustained this university, is transmitted. He challenged the students and asked them a question, how many of you are willing to serve this country and sacrifice and give up two years or more of your life to work in developing countries and serve them help them to have a better life. How does public service fit into a public university? That was on the minds of people who were going to join the Peace Corps. And when Kennedy came to campus and talked about the Peace Corps, it really was that kind of a thing. So you've been the beneficiaries of public support. What are you going to do you know, to sort of pay that back in a way? We have always at Michigan instilled this concept of service, service to others. Teaching, research, and service, that's in our motto. So if somebody like Raoul Wallenberg came to Michigan from Europe, and then he went back to Europe when he graduated, ended up being a diplomat for the Swedish government, and through that work, uh, working in Budapest during World War II, saved, some would say, 100,000 Jewish people from the Holocaust. And he came here for a reason. You know, his family, he could have gone anywhere. His family wanted him to come to the Midwest and to learn about the Midwest and the United States, and I think that we had something to do with his development as the Meg magnificent humanitarian that he was, and a selfless humanitarian. This guy's first in his class from Michigan's architecture school, and yet he spends his summers hitchhiking through Canada and Mexico to get to know it all better. And then, of course, later on, when he's called to do so by his own conscience, this guy is a wealthy Swedish Christian aristocrat who goes to save 100,000 lives of poor Hungarian Jews. He was brash, he was courageous, he was creative, he was innovative. All of the features and the characteristics that we saw when he was hitchhiking across North America came into play. As is well known, of course, when the Soviet army came into Budapest after a terrible, terrible siege that did horrific damage to the city, he was arrested and uh, disappeared into the Soviet gulag and was never seen again. Now, not many will have even the opportunity to make the kind of impact that Raoul Wallenberg made. But there was something about his training here, something about the books he read, something about the faculty that he was able to work with that we know must have set him up to become a great hero. We don't all have the moral fortitude to be heroes, but we hope that a great education will give people the vision that they need to understand what the problems of the world are. I wanted to carry on the legacy in a way that our students could understand what Royal Wallenberg did. And you know, we have the medal that we give every year to recognize an outstanding individual. But I didn't think we should limit it 
to people who are already accomplished because we have so many students who are passionate and who are worldly and they, they will understand what to do and I always look with great anticipation to see who has been awarded the scholarship and the fellowship because it will give them the freedom to go do something really significant. Meredith is the next Wallenberg Fellow. She's going to Mumbai and Kolkata and Madras to work with uh, theater organizations in urban areas, very poor urban areas. It's basically $25,000 to go anywhere in the world to do something that helps people. And I was like, they're never gonna pick an artist for this. They're gonna pick an economist, they're gonna pick a business major, someone in public health. They're, ne they're never gonna think that what I wanna do is important enough. I feel a lot of responsibility to do it, and I feel really motivated and really determined to get it done. We have people that are willing to take a risk on what you believe in. And I'm, you know, sitting here proof of that. Meredith is just one of those incredible examples of this impact that can be had. And I think not only does it prepare all of our students in terms of just their awareness of others, but it's really preparing them to actually be leaders in what is a consistently evolving world. There's one great quote by Sergeant Shriver, the first director of the Peace Corps, uh, who said that, that he knew from his own experience that those who, who volunteer and go abroad for tours, their lives will be changed forever. And the second best part of that is that when they return, they will contribute to the reservoir of compassion and understanding in America. There's an expectation, I don't want to say of service, but of making the world a better place, change. I mean, there's a reason that people like Raoul Wallenberg went here. It's part of who we are. There's a reason that, that Kennedy proposed the Peace Corps here. He could have gone anywhere else and did it. I think he knew this was a place where that idea would take root. What's the point of being a world-class university if you're not going to help change the world? Made possible by the Stanley and Judith Frankel Family Foundation.